if you're interested in getting an 800, I just have a few additional points to make. Um, first, as we saw in a previous video, you have no room for error on almost every administration of the test that you're going to see. Getting one wrong or omitting one will immediately take you out of the running. Now, occasionally with a harder than average math section, maybe you can get one wrong or omit one and get an 800, but that's not usually the norm. So you've got no room for error, and that's pretty much what's going to make getting that 800 hard. Another thing, actually, I should mention before that is the value of an 800 is quite overrated um, because it's so tight at the top. An 800 versus a 770 or a 750, frankly, the difference is not as great as you might think. You're not going to get turned down from a college because, oh, Johnny got a 770 and Mary got an 800, so we're going to take Mary. That That's never going to happen. Um, a 770 is a fine, fine score. So if you take the SAT and you get like 750s across the board, I would almost say never retake. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to tell people to do, but they're just better uses of your time than, than chasing an 800 in most most circumstances. But anyway, if you're still shooting for it, it's a good goal to try to go for. Here's some additional advice to help you on your way. So first, master all content. And this may seem obvious, but I really want to stress, you need to have the knowledge of the math concepts that are that I go over in the boot camp uh, of the strategies of the approaches they need to be immediately accessible to you if you're sitting there you have to think for 15 seconds or 30 seconds about I don't know how to use the Pythagorean theorem or how to use the 30 60 90 triangle and that's not really a good sign you need to have that information at hand there should be no question as to your mastery of the content right bar none no exceptions second thing in terms of preparing you want to practice that goes without saying but especially the hard questions because when you're at the top, when you're 700 plus looking for an 800, where you're going to see the most benefits to your time is not only increasing your accuracy on the hard questions, but also increasing your speed there. Because the faster you are overall, the more time you're going to have to review questions you've already done. And we're going to talk about that as the last and most important tip. So when you practice, of course, practice all questions, but especially the hards. Really focus your energy figuring those things out. A third thing to do, and something I preach in these videos, and I'm going to show you again, is flexibility. Most of all, for 800 scores, you want to have that toolbox, that flexible approach to questions where you can answer a question in two or three or four different ways. You know, you're not stuck to one rigid method that you can think creatively and flexibly. That is what's going to get you to that 800 level is that ability to think on your feet because you're going to see questions that might stump you. You're going to see questions that you're not going to get right away. And what's going to separate a 700 score from an 800 score is the ability to, when under pressure, when not knowing what to do, still figuring out, gutting out an answer. So really focus on that flexibility. When you're reviewing the questions you've done for homework, really focus on figuring out different ways to approach, figuring out different ways of unpacking and taking apart the question. A fourth thing to do is check your work as you go, constantly review and revise. You might do this already, but one of the things that I do is as I'm working through a problem, I'm kind of retracing my steps constantly. I'm retracing my reasoning. I'm reworking my computation on the fly just to make sure I've not made any mistakes because the thing besides the hard question that's going to crush a lot of your 800 aspirations is going to be making silly mistakes especially in the easies or you know in the easy mediums and those are just deadly those avoidable mistakes you know dropping a negative or 5 plus 8 is 11 you know stuff like that really avoidable one way to avoid that is as you're working always be reviewing and revising the method your reasoning the answers. Um, when you get an answer, check for the reasonableness criterion. Does it make sense? Is it reasonable given the parameters of the problem? Things like that. You always want to have that second mind, as I've called it elsewhere, always kind of monitored, monitoring your process, making sure there's nothing going awry. Then finally, the most important tip I can give you is have time to check your answers. One of the worst things that can happen to an 800 score is, you know, they're so good at the section, they finish it in 15 minutes, but then they just kind of sit there for the last 10 minutes of the section. That is so deadly. You want to use every minute at your disposal to make sure you're done your best on those questions. You, if you could finish the section in 10 minutes, nice job. Spend the next 10 minutes doing the section again, and then spend the next five minutes after that checking some of the hard questions. You know, go back. Questions you've marked for further review, obviously look at those, but even questions you haven't, go back, see if you can do them a different way, see if you can self-check the answers. That is what's going to take you from the 700 to the 800 is that attention to detail. Making sure you've not made a silly mistake, making sure you've given them the answer that they have actually wanted, that you haven't read something into the question that isn't there, all those kinds of things. That's what's going to separate you from the 700 to the 800. And frankly, maybe I could add number six here as a little bonus is luck. Luck is such a factor here. I mean, 
on a good day, you could, you know, if you consistently score 700 in some practice, maybe on a good day, you'll score your 800. You know, maybe if you score 800s pretty consistently on practice, maybe on a bad day, you get a couple wrong and there you go. You're already at like a 750. Um, so luck is going to factor into this. And just like I said in the beginning, really make sure that that 800 is something that is really important to you. If you get a 770, frankly, you should be, with few exceptions, you should be pretty much done with at least, unless of course the other scores aren't up to par, but don't make an 800 something to obsess about. Do your best, maximize your score. But in the end, there are many more important things for college applications that are going to be important um, than just 800s on your math section. All right. So those are a few other tips for the 800 math people out there. Let's move now, now we're done with the introduction, let's move into the first set of videos. And the first topic we're going to go over, the most important topic, is everyone's favorite algebra. So we're going to have a number of videos detailing all the kinds of questions you can see and the tactics you can use to solve them.